Okay, thanks, Jill. Um, we started a half an hour early, not because I'm, I'm not going to use the full hour. I only have about 11 slides, but uh, just in case there are questions to leave time for questions till 10. Um, I'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, the Based on experience, putting the V2 model together, the project commissioned a deep dive um, to review how new features are brought into the model and how they're tested before they're brought into the model. We had a, a 16 member committee. I've listed all the members here. Um, uh, we worked quite well together uh, over a course of about six months. We had weekly meetings. Um, for the questions at the end, I'll uh, try to answer them since I'll have the microphone, but any of these committee members should also feel free to jump in uh, and, and answer questions as well. Um, we, uh, as the committee, we first uh, went through 11 case studies and we've um, documented them actually pretty thoroughly on Confluence. These were unexpected setbacks or, or things in during the V2 development process that made the model take longer to finish than expected. Um, and then we tried to document how they could have been prevented or caught earlier. Um, and then one or two cases, they're actually success stories of features that were brought in, properly evaluated, and then we decided uh, not to use them. Um, that documentation is on Confluence. We probably won't make that, put it on our public website, but it's available to anyone at the E3SM SFA Confluence site. Um, the new policy, uh, I put the link, this is public, it's on our website. Um, I put the link here. My slides are basically a high level condensed version of this review policy. So the policy itself is, will be a better reference than, than my slides in the future. Um, we divided it into three sections and I'll go through these uh, in, in numerical order. Um, starting with the first section, which is new feature, the process to, oh, sorry, just some terminology before I jump into the different sections. Um, and I'll use this throughout the talk. Uh, we divided the code changes into four categories. Three of these we've been using since the beginning of the project and one new feature, one new category called a stealth feature. Um, so bit for bit, that's new code that when you bring it into the model, the results that it produces are bit for bit identical with the old code. So typically infrastructure changes and um, code cleanup type work. Then round off level changes. This is code changes where the new code would match the old code if all the arithmetic was done exactly. Um, but on a computer with finite precision, our model will diverge exponentially fast. Uh, so it makes it challenging to tell something really is round off or bugs. Um, but round off changes are the ones where the climate of the new and old code will converge to each other if uh, it, as we increase the averaging time. And then climate changing, you know, new features that actually change the climate. Um, and climate changing fe features are code that comes in also includes other model configurations that will change the climate, such as changing parameters or default resolution forcing data. And then the new category that we introduced in this phrase was coined by Andrew Bradley on the committee. It's called a stealth feature. This is a code that is a, a new feature that's turned off by default. So it can be brought in the model bit for bit, meaning that if you don't turn the feature on, everything is identical with the old code. It's a popular development and useful development model to bring features in and then allow them to be tested. Um, but it's also the cause of, of some delays and the, most of the policy is around ensuring stealth features um, receive much more testing than they have in the past. Another uh, terminology we introduced is uh, reference solutions. Um, this kind of encompasses best practices followed by many developers, but now we'll be 
maintained and documented by the project. And these are uh, you know, uh, solutions of the reflect, reflecting the current state of the main branch where most development should be done. Um, and we'll have all these for a variety of simulations. For the coupled model, we'll maintain three reference solutions, one for each the configuration of the model used for the three simulation campaigns, water cycle, cryosphere, and BGC. These are typically 100-year fully coupled runs. And then the component groups will maintain shorter, you know, easier to run reference solutions with F, I, and G cases. So in the atmosphere, for example, this would typically be a five-year F case with cyclic year cyclic forcing. Um, these reference solutions will be updated periodically, especially when a climate changing uh, pull request is merged in, or quasi monthly. Um, we'll just rerun them to check for unintended changes. You can have a lot of code that comes in, supposed to be bit for bit or round off, um, might not be fully tested, but will eventually be uh, fully evaluated by comparing with these when the new reference cases are generated, reference solutions. Um, and then a note, I put this in red uh, on my slides. A lot of the work to make the code review process possible isn't done yet. So, uh, you know, for, for the time being, we, we will attempt to follow the spirit of the process um, as we add this, add, uh, improve the infrastructure and support for doing the full, implementing the full process. So the reference solutions and the documentation on what you should look at is not ready yet. Okay, so now on to the various sections. Uh, the first section, the new feature request process and documentation requirements. Um, we request for, for new features and stealth features, a new feature overview document um, has these five um, sections listed here, a high level description of the code changes, overview of the design inf and infrastructure changes. Um, most importantly is the expected improvements to the model and how it will be demonstrated uh, when the pull request finally comes in. Um, in order to keep our documentation up to date, date we added this so that we'll, um, um, new features will comment on what has to be updated in the documentation so we can keep that up to date. Uh, expected impacts on computational performance and mass and energy budgets uh, and if relevant uh, papers that might be published. For uh, E3SM SFA funded work, the feature should um, be a already appear in the group's roadmap and thus the component group lead um, will be aware of this work. Uh, for externally funded work, um, the developers are encouraged to, so we'll require this document when the feature comes in, but of course we encourage developers from outside projects to submit this document early in their development process um, and start a conversation with the relevant component lead just to assist in later possible E3SM acceptance. Um, this overview document is as a little bit vague. Um, we didn't want to be precise. We wanted to allow some flexibility in, in the format. And we consider it more a, uh, an iterative process with the model component lead or the reviewer that ends up reviewing it. Um, uh, some examples that are in progress right now, it can be quite short. In Xiao Cheng's atmospheric physics NGD, he's starting to follow this policy. And he has basically a table where each row is a new feature and a few sentences in each of the five categories mentioned on the previous slide. A, a more detailed one um, that I've been in, involved with, we're working on a design document for the EAM parameterization interface to the physics parameterizations. Uh, to add, the new feature would be to add water loading and non-hydrostatic pressure. And this is a two-page document with the five items mentioned and uh, and then an actual, since this is a, a poorly documented within E3SM, an actual design document describing the uh, physics interface. Um, 
we'll collect these examples. So we'll hopefully in a you know few months we'll have a, a larger collection for people to see what what we're looking for. Um, and then the component group lead or delegate. And everywhere I write group lead, I put in parentheses or delegate, but I'll, I'll stop saying that for the rest of the presentation, but that's always implied. Um, reviews this document. Um, and the main thing I put in bold here is to determine if there's sufficient benefit to E3SM to justify integration of the feature. This is especially true with self stealth features since we want basically all code, even if it's turned off, in the model to be tested, and, you know, nightly tested and maintained. So it incurs some cost to the project. Um, and so we, you know, deferred that to the group lead to make that decision in, in collaboration with the developer. Um, and then there are certainly features that might come in, especially from outside projects where the, the component group lead might not be aware that they're needed for a certain BER missions. And so there, that would they they should have that in that case consult with the E3SM leadership, and then the component group lead should um, evaluate the feature and see if performance and infrastructure reviews are also needed. So not every some PRs obviously won't need that, but if there's any um, chance of performance impact or or definitely will have a performance impact. The Performance and infrastructure group leads should also review the document. And then another note here in red, the E3SM component groups don't actually exist right now, um, but will be stood up as part of phase three of the project. Okay, moving on to section two. And, um, this is the documentation that comes with the pull request. Um, and we've, it depends in on the type, D different features need different types of documentation. Um, the bit for bit changes and round off changes, we haven't changed much. Um, uh, one exception is bit for bit changes can't include stealth features. So bit for bit changes, which don't have new code follow current practices. Uh, for round off, um, the current practices, the developer provides as much evidence as possible at, that the changes are round off. And, in the longer document, we put in some examples of what that could be. Um, and then we request that the developer also runs this the E3SM non-bit-for-bit test suite to provide further evidence to support a claim of round-off only changes. And if any of those fail, that's a sign that additional scrutiny is needed. Uh, the main change is bringing in stealth features. Um, and as I said before, we want much more evaluation of these stealth features before it's brought into the model. And that includes the ability to run in the coupled model. Um, and so that's, uh, I'll go through these items on this slide for stealth features. Uh, since it is new code, it, the PR request should include a link to the approved uh, new feature overview document. Um, we'll probably collect those in a certain spot on Confluence, and you can put the link in GitHub in the pull request. Uh, document that is possible to turn the feature on and off, and that it shows up can be determined if it's on or off via the log file or name list. Ensure that it's covered by a timer if appropriate. And all new features need a test in the regression suite, so they'll be tested as part of our standard nightly tests to make sure they run across a variety of compilers and systems. And then with the new feature turned on, and this is most of the new work um, in, the, in the new policy is represented in these, these bullets. Um, we want the new feature to uh, the developer to verify that passes a super bit for bit test suite. This will be much more extensive than what we can afford to run nightly, um, but affordable to run you know, once for each new feature. Um, just because of inadvertently breaking these bit for bit reproducibility properties on different on restart or different processors or different thread counts, it's hard to fix after the fact. And then the performance change will have a new HPC test suite. Also too expensive to run nightly, but run for each new feature that 
documents the performance, including scalability. And the PR request should link to the PACE results, uh, the database, the performance database. Um, and then the, the new um, feature should be turned on and compared with the component level reference test. And then you run the E3SM diag diagnostics and put that in the pull request. We hope to develop an automated system to uh, maybe collect the diagnostics, run the comparison against the reference solution, and have a link that can easily be put into the GitHub pull request. But that also is a work in progress. And then uh, made a, maybe a key new point is features going into the model, even if they're turned off, have to work in the coupled model, although they don't you know, have to be perfect, but they have to run and not break obvious things. We call this a sanity check um, B comp set or coupled run. It won't be the full 100, couple, 100 year simulation, you know, with detailed evaluation, but a 10 year coupled simulation is what we thought we could get started with. And then um, reasonably well is not well, not precisely defined. That's up to the uh, component leads to, to work out what that means. Um, <clears throat> and then for climate changing, that's all the material for stealth features. But instead of this sanity check, it, uh, coupled run the uh, climate changing PR really has to work well in the coupled model. So it needs the full 100 year simulation compared against the reference solution in the GitHub. Okay, then section three, the pull request review process in our design document. Um, so in addition to our current review process, which is mostly an external reviewer to do a code review, and the PR is then assigned to an integrator to integrate it into the code base, um, we add a basically one additional step to the review process, again, depending on the type of code change. So bit for bit, round off in stealth features, we ask the component group lead to ensure the PR, um, don't know what I meant by correctly, oh, correctly characterized meaning, is it is it a stealth bit for bit round off or a stealth feature? Um, so a bit for, you know, a bit for bit code change that has a stealth feature and it needs to be characterized as a stealth feature, not bit for bit. And then verifies that all the material is included in the PR and checks the ref and solution comparisons to make sure they're okay. For climate changing, um, we require a simulation group lead instead of component lead to sign off on that. Um, similar job though, review all the material, make sure it's all presented, make sure the climate looks good. Uh, and then that will also trigger, since it's climate changing, uh, update of all the associated reference solutions. All right, so this is my last slide. Uh, just, just the kind of four, I'd say, key points to the new process. Um, new features and stealth features need an overview document and component uh, group lead approval um, before we start considering it or in doing development within the E3SM SFA project. And then new features need long coupled simulations to compare with reference solutions in addition to component only tests before they can be brought into the model. Um, stealth features have to be fully tested with the stealth feature turned on in fully tested in component only simulations, but and also shown to work reasonably well in fully coupled simulations. Um, so stealth features are you know, very similar to new features, but slightly less uh, testing. And they don't, you know, we can bring in a new feature that's not uh, improving the couple system, but it has potential to eventually do that. Or it brings in a new capability that we might want to turn on for some configurations. And then <clears throat> um, evaluation of new features will ensure that uh, key metrics to be defined by the simulation leads are maintained in terms of simulation quality key properties we need for the science campaigns. And in addition to that, we check for preserving uh, or improving the performance 
maintain all the bit for bit reproducer pro reproducibility properties and ensure we don't degrade mass and energy conservation. And that is my last slide, so thank you.